I'm back. It's been a while. How have you been? I've been doing great. I've been on the road for the past few weeks, but I'm back now. A lot of people ask me how I develop my film at home, so this is what this video is. I was waiting until I got a new set of chemicals so I could show you the whole process, and I finally did that, so here we are. For this video, I'm going to be using the new powder version of C41 by Cinestill. It's basically the same as the liquid version of their kit, except this powder version doesn't have a stabilizer. Um, I don't really know why. <laughs> I'm going to be using my stabilizer that I've had from my old kit since it's still good. I would recommend getting a stabilizer or photo flow um, if you choose to get this kit because what a stabilizer does is it helps make the film last longer and make it more archival. It does say in the pamphlet thing here that since still includes that most modern films release a stabilizing agent throughout the two-step process here but I shoot a lot of expired film so I don't want to have to rely on that you know so I would suggest just getting a stabilizer they're not that expensive um, and they last a long time so the things you'll need to develop your film at home is a bucket I use a bucket to keep all my chemicals in and I fill it with water and that's how I change the temperature of the chemicals. You can use any sort of bucket as long as it fits all of your bottles inside. The next thing that you'll need is a can opener, your funnels, the chemicals of course, the bottles for your chemicals. I would recommend getting darker tinted bottles that reflect light because light can make your chemicals degrade faster. I'm actually using clear plastic bottles, but I keep them tucked away inside of a closet where the doors are always shut there so there's no light getting in and it's also really cool in there. If you're looking to buy new glasses specifically for this, I'll link some in the description that I think would work well. But as long as it, they're tucked away from light and in a cool area, um, you should be okay. Scissors. Your developing tank. I use this one by Patterson. It has a lid. Um, this little agitator thing, which I'll talk more about later. This funnel part that keeps it light safe so no light gets in the container. And your film reels and this pole thingy. So you can develop two rolls with this tank. Yes. What this agitator is for is to agitate the film. Basically when you're developing you have to agitate the film every so often, which I'll explain later. You can either do this by using this agitator. I don't know if all tanks come with this. This was new to me when I bought this tank. I never used one before. But you basically put it in and you can swivel like that. Or to agitate, every time you put the, a chemical in here, you have to close it with the lid and basically to agitate that you go like this. Personally, I hate doing that with the lid because I never get the lid on tight enough and then the chemicals drip out and it gets on your hands and you just waste chemicals which you need to be wearing gloves anyway but it's just really annoying in my opinion. This is a lot easier, plus it saves your wrist too. Kind of. Well, at least one of them. I don't know. Another thing you'll need is a dark bag or a dark closet, bathroom, or other type of room in order to put the film into the uh, developing tank. I use a closet that is really dark. Um, there is some light that comes in the bottom of the door, but basically I use one of those draft stoppers that you put at the bottom of the door and that blocks the light out. If you don't have something like that, you can buy a dark bag that's made specifically for film and I'll put that in the description. It's about $20, I think. You're also going to need a thermometer, a timer, I just use my phone, binder clips or strings to hang your film up when you dry it. You don't specifically need binder clips, you know, you can use whatever you want, that's just what I use. I tie a binder clip to uh, the shower curtain holders and I hang them that way and then I put another one on the bottom to prevent it from curling as it dries and 
just help it dry a little bit faster. You also need sleeves to put the negatives in when you cut them after they're after they've dried and you also need gloves. These C41 chemicals are very toxic so please wear gloves and also run a fan or open a window while you're developing because it's not healthy that's for sure it's not healthy. So the first thing you need to do is mix your chemicals together. This will vary depending on what kit you have but for me uh, for the developer I needed to use 600 to 700 milliliters of 100 degree water. I add the powder developer and keep stirring until it's dissolved. After that I top off the solution with more of the 100 degree water until it's 1000 milliliters. For the Blix, I did basically the same thing except the Blix has part A and part B. So I added part A while circulating the water and then after stirring that until it dissolved, I added the contents of that to the storage bottle because it was in a pitcher. And then I added, added part B and then like the directions say, I uh, moved the mixture from the storage bottle to the pitcher back and forth a couple times and then after I was done doing that I topped off the solution with more water while circulating. Yeah, basically just do whatever the directions tell you to on the kit that you have. The next thing you need to do is put your film in the developing tank which is probably the hardest thing of this whole process. I would suggest taking maybe negatives you already had developed and whatnot and practice putting it in the reel or better yet buying some really cheap film on eBay and practicing opening the canisters maybe with your eyes closed and putting them on the reel since you have to do this part completely in the dark it's very hard when you first start. If you're scared of ruining a roll of film your first time developing it, you could also just buy like maybe in bulk some really cheap film, shoot one of them and practice with the other and that way you don't have to worry about screwing up a really precious roll of film. Also be careful when you're opening the film canister because with a can opener I've cut myself at least twice trying to open the film in the dark. I, I don't know if I'm too aggressive or something, but it's very annoying to deal with when you're in the dark and you're bleeding everywhere. You kind of have to... It's just not a good time. <laughs> So now it is time to develop the film, yay! Finally! So I'm gonna be going off of the directions for my kit, but it might be different if you use another kit, so just keep that in mind. So the first thing you want to do is a pre-soak, and it says this is optional, but I always do it just to make sure I get as much dust or whatever off the film as possible. So basically you want to fill the tank with the same temperature water you plan on developing, with, um, you let it sit there for a minute and then dump it out. Next is the developer. For my kit, you can basically set the temperature for your developer anywhere between 72 degrees to 102 degrees. The faster, or the warmer the temperature, the faster it'll take to develop your film. You probably want it to be as warm as possible so that it doesn't take as long, but I know in the winter, at least for me, it was, it took forever for me to get the temperature up past 95 degrees, let alone 102. So I normally just develop mine at either 90 degrees or 95. And for 90 degrees it takes 8.5 minutes and that's not so bad to me. Sorry the lighting keeps changing but the sun is going down so it's gonna be a bit variable for the next rest of this video honestly. But yeah, as long as you keep the temperature of the developer the same throughout the whole time you're developing, it doesn't matter exactly what temperature that is as long as you're just following the chart that's included here. I think that with some other developing kits it has to be one temperature. I could be wrong though. Does that make sense? I'm not saying that you can change the temperature while you're devel developing it. It can only be one temperature. It's just it can range between 72 to 102. You feel me? And also, while I have the developer in, I usually leave my uh, developing tank inside of the bucket of water so then it stays that temperature and it doesn't cool down. 
As your chemicals age, you need to leave them in the developer a little bit longer. Basically how I compensate for this is for every 10 rolls I develop, I will add 30 seconds onto the developing time. Um, just because the chemicals weaken a little bit. But, you know, judge it yourself. You might need to... If you develop a roll and you notice it's looking a little flat, you might need to leave it in the next time a little bit longer. It's It shouldn't be anything super dramatic. You shouldn't ruin a roll doing this. You know, like, it'll just be something minor where the negatives aren't perfect when you scan them. Um, but you should be able to edit them to make them look better, you know, it's not going to be anything super dramatic, at least from my experience it never was. So once you pour your developer in, you start agitating for the first 10 seconds and then after that every 30 seconds you agitate for inversion cycles. So basically you start the timer, agitate for the first 10 seconds, and then every, every second, every, wow. Every 30 seconds after that, you agitate four times. It's pretty easy. It's a little tedious, but it's easy, you know? Nothing too difficult there. Once the time is up, pour the developer back into the bottle, and then pour the Blix into the developing tank. Be careful you don't mix the developer and the Blix up. Um, if you get any Blix in the developer, it can definitely ruin it completely because Blix stops the developer from developing your film and it also makes the film light no longer light sensitive so after you use the Blix and you do all that process you can take the lid off the tank and your film can see light and it won't ruin it. Also with the Blix it doesn't have to be such a strict temperature as the developer it can be anywhere between 75 and 105 degrees um, so you don't need to really worry about keeping it, do you mind? But um, yeah, with the Blix you don't have to keep it a precise temperature, it can be any temperature between that, it's, it'll be fine. And then agitation is the same for the Blix, start the timer, agitate for the first 10 seconds, and then agitate 4 times for every 30, four, for every 30 seconds, wow, okay. Right, and then after your time is up, put the Blix back into the bottle and you can take the lid off the tank if you want and wash your film. You can wash your film by running it under water for 3 minutes or filling and emptying your tank 7 times. So after this wash, you can, if you're not using stabilizer, you can just hang your film to dry. If you are using a stabilizer, follow the directions for the brand that you have. For mine, you pour the stabilizer into the tank, agitate for the first 15 seconds, and then let it sit for a minute, and then you dump it back into the bottle. And you can reuse the stabilizer, so. You can reuse all the chemicals. Was that obvious? I'm not sure. And then after the stabilizer, I hang my film to dry. And that's about it. Once it's dry, I cut the film into six frame sections and put it in the plastic sleeves. As far as longevity is concerned, you can stretch these kits pretty far if you take care of them and be careful not to cross-contaminate and store them properly. The kits themselves say they last about 8 or so rolls of film depending on the kit, but they only put that low of an amount because their longevity depends on so many things. It depends on how many rolls you're developing at once, um, how you're storing them, if you're using them consistently consistently and whatnot, so they kind of just put that as a safe bet, but my last kit that I had, I developed at least 30 rolls, like I know there was more than 30, I don't know the exact number, and the results were still pretty good, like towards the end it definitely, um, it did decrease a little, but they were still completely usable. I just got back from a road trip and I shot like 10 rolls of film so I just want to make sure that I have very fresh chemicals to use and it was probably time to get rid of them anyway so. It can be a little daunting at first developing your own film but if you're like me and on a budget but want to shoot film and it's very expensive it's really worth learning how to do it because I can shoot film all the time now and it doesn't cost me an arm and a leg to get them developed and scanned because I can do it myself. 
It's also fun. To me, it's kind of therapeutic. It depends if I mess up a roll or not, then it's not very therapeutic anymore. <laughs> I will make a mistake or two. It's We're all human. I would say you're definitely going to make a mistake later down in the road because because normally in the beginning you're going to be very careful, you're going to be nervous, and you're going to pay attention to everything, and then down the road after a few rolls you're going to get a little bit careless, and that's usually when the mistakes happen, at least for me anyway. But you live and learn. It's You'll get better. It'll be fine. It's so much more satisfying when the results come out at the end, and when you take that roll off the reel and all the pictures turned out is just the best feeling in the world to me. Maybe not in the world, but it's a good feeling. <laughs> I think I covered everything. I printed out this all these things to make sure I said everything that I wanted to because I am a mess at all times, but I'm actually organized this time, so pat myself on the back here. If you have a question, let me know. I'll try to answer it. I. You know, I haven't been doing this for years on years on years, so I don't know everything, but I do know a lot of things, some things, maybe not a lot, some things, enough to make a video about it, I think, anyway. So yeah, let me know if you have a question, I'll try to answer it, and don't be scared, it'll be fine, probably, but um, yeah, I guess that's it, I hope this helped, okay, bye. <laughs>